गुड मॉर्निंग सोमिया एंड वेलकम टू द टेस्ट प्रेप कार्ड डेमो सेशन आई एम रोहित एंड आई एम दिव विद टेस्ट प्रेप कार्ड आई बीन एसोसिएटेड विद टेस्ट प्रेप कार्ड फॉर लास्ट फाइव ईयर्स एंड आई हैव डन माई बी टेक इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग सो सोमिया यू आर इन आई डी एस एल राइट यस आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट नेक्स्ट ईयर नेक्स्ट ईयर ओके सो इट्स नॉट येट स्टार्टेड I'm in my summer vacation right now. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, you, you do you have any background on physics? Have you ever done taken any subject of physics in the past? Uh, not really, just in science. Okay, okay. So, uh, let me do one thing. Let me discuss with you the one of the basic chapter that we have, and basically it's the basics for physics. It tells you about why we are studying physics how do we measure the quantity in physics right so all those things are there in this chapter uh, we we will not be able to discuss the entire chapter let me tell you because it's a uh, it's it's for more than 2 hour session but uh, because we have this demo class so what we what i will do in the first half an hour i will discuss with you as much as possible then i will discuss some questions with you fine uh, is it okay. clear somya yes Okay, so let me um, let me start with physics. Uh, this, you know, uh, yeah, you have never taken any subject of science in the past, right? This is the first time you are taking. Uh, no, I have done science, but not a specific physics class. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Okay. Okay. So let's start with this then. See, uh, this particular chapter is on measurement and uncertainty. Now, what is measurement? Measurement, whenever some quantity, whenever let's say you have to measure anything. Okay, first of all, what is physics? In physics, uh, we understand the thing around us, right? Now, whatever you see, right, it has some measurement associated with it. Let's say if you look at any object around you let's say there is one car which is there now that car can be either at rest or it can be in motion right when it is at rest you can clearly say that okay this car is at rest so its speed is zero but let's say if it is moving then the question does not end here that okay it is moving the question will be at what speed it is moving whether the speed is changing or not in which direction it is moving so physics deal with this measurement and you know analysis part of anything which you see around uh, you let's say if i'm speaking right it is nothing but related to sound so physics will measurement uh, will do some measurement okay what is the loudness of this sound how much decibel of the sound is this so that's what it it will measure now uh, so measurement in this chapter we talked about first measurement how we measure the thing so there are instruments but up to what number you can measure right that is one uh so may i am getting echo are you are you using uh the different mic and the different speaker when i say that it means you might be using the speaker of your laptop and you are using headphone for voice uh yes Okay so uh, is there a possibility you can use the same device for uh, speaking and uh, listening Um yes I am using the same device Okay okay so now I think uh, see I'm I'm again getting the echo Anyway uh, so so may I can do one thing when you are not speaking you can just mute your mic and okay. then when you need to speak just unmute it So measurement and uncertainty so let's start with uh, so whenever you measure anything right there are always some uncertainty let's say if if i measure and you measure something um let's say this length has to be measured i may say that okay this length is 2.5 meter but then you may say no it is 2.52 meters there are always some uncertainty on whatever we see whatever we measure that is called uncertainty that may be related to error so we have quantities and units 
So physics deal with the physical quantities, which are those things which are measurable, such as mass, length, time, and electric current. Quantities are related to one another by equation, right? So one quantity is related to other. Here they have given you the example of density. Density is nothing but whatever is the total mass by volume, which is a symbol. Ohm saying that the density is the ratio of the mass and the volume, right? So in physics we talk about the physical quantities, where physical quantities can be related to other by using the equation. That's what they they say here. Now there are two types of quantities that we'll study. One is the fundamental quantity. Second is the derived quantities. Fundamental quantity, as the name says, it's me. It's the it's the fundamental thing. It's the base thing. So let's say if if this pen is having some mass, right? That is the fundamental property of this. This pen has some mass. This pen has some length. So that is nothing but it is related to the fundamental attribute of a particle. There are total seven fundamental quantities, right? All other quantities are called the derived quantities because those quantities can be derived from this. Let's say if if I say this pen is having certain mass, this pen is having certain volume. You can say its density rho is going to be mass by volume. Where mass is a fundamental quantity, volume is also related to fundamental quantity. So density is a derived quantity here. So there are two types of quantity. One is the fundamental quantity. Second is the derived quantity. So it is essential that all measurement made by one person are understood by other. To achieve this, we use units that are understood to have unambiguous thing. So the worldwide standard for this, we we measure all the thing in the SI units, right? We use only SI units in physics. See, I can measure anything in meters. You might be measuring it in feet. Someone might be measuring it in uh, centimeter. So what physics says? Physics says that okay, don't have such an unambiguity. Use the standard units. So for standard units, for mass we have kilogram, for length we have meter, for time we have second. Right? Mass you have to measure in kilo kilogram. It should not happen that you are measuring the mass in pounds. So. So there are the fundamental and derived units. So as I said, there are total seven fundamental quantities. Let me write it here. So there are total seven fundamental quantities. So there are total seven fundamental quantities. One is the mass. Second is length. Third is time. Fourth is electric current. Fifth is we have electric current, we have time, we have length, we have mass. Then we have uh, temperature. Then six we have is the amount of substance. And the last one that we have is it is um, Now there are total seven fundamental quantities, right? And these are the fundamental units which are related to so kilogram, for length we have meter. For time we use second. For temperature you have Kelvin. 
these are the units amount of substance we use mole where mole is a standard quantity whose value is 6.023 so these many total quantity if, if it is there we call it as mole fine any doubt till here somya for me any doubt no, 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 I, I, I no, cannot no. hear you. Not right now. No, okay, good. So that's what they are talking about here. These are the units and uh, which are the fundamental unit. So the fundamental and the derived unit. See, there are certain formulas. So we say acceleration is change in velocity by time. So acceleration can be derived from velocity and time. So acceleration is a derived quantity, but still velocity is also a derived quantity, which is related to change in displacement by time, right? The displacement is related to length. So this derived quantity is related to the fundamental quantity. So they are giving you the example. So apart from those seven quantity, right? All other quantities. When I say all, means all are the derived quantities. Fine. Right? And next comes the significant figures. Significant figure. Let me ask you one question first. Let's say this is a box which I have given you to measure. This is a scale. And you measured it. This is how what you have measured. So let's say this is zero here. See, you have to tell me. Uh, I am just skipping till here. Let's say here you have five. Can you tell me if you are measuring this right? How will you measure it? What will be the reading for you? Let's say it is in centimeter. So each centimeter is divided into ten parts. This I have actually zoomed in. You you can assume that I have zoomed in, and I am just showing you this. Can you tell me how will you read this? What will be your reading? Just one minute. Five. Yes, tell me. What will be the reading? Five point six zero. Six zero, you are saying? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. See, six is here, and this is seven, and it is in somewhere. So, this is six, this is seven, and this is lying here. I, I, you can assume that you know I have zoomed in. After zooming in, this is what you are seeing. Now, tell me, what is this reading? Five point six five. Okay, uh, you, you can unmute yourself because now I'm not getting echo. So you are saying five point five, right? Let us have given it to someone, and he said five point six six, and I said no, it is not five point six six. It is not five point six five, but it is five point six four, right? All of us, me, you, and a third person, all of us are sure about these two digits, right? But all of us are not sure about this digit. Fine. This is related to significant figures. Now, what significant figure says? Whatever are the confirmed digits, plus one undoubtful digit. Right. This is the number of. So, this is called significant figures. Right? 
right? In this case, if I ask you how many significant figures are there, you will say answer is three. Right? Any doubt, Samia? No. So, uh, so uh, then you know you also have to uh, round it off. Significant here means meaningful. So, meaningful digits. So, consider this 84.072. It has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 significant digits. Why? Because 8 here is the most significant. Then we have 4. Then we have 0. Then we have 7. Then we have 2. So, overall if you see we have 5 significant digits here. Right? Similarly, you come here, it is 0 0.0024 and uh, let's say if the last, uh, if we wish to, okay, a digit that is a non-zero will always be a significant. Any non-zero digit will always be significant, that you have to count it. Zeros that occur as a sandwich between the two non-zero will also be significant. So it has four. This has six significant digits, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, non sandwich zeros that occur to the left of a non zero. Non sandwich zero which occur to the left, this is left, of a non zero digit are not significant. So, 0 0.345, this zero is not significant. It has only three significant digits. Fine. 0 0.034 has only two significant digits because all zeros which are to the left, which are not sandwiched, to the left of a non D zero are always not significant. I will tell you the reason why. Let us say I have measured something, you have measured something as 10 centimeter. Fine. I have written it as 0 0.001 kilometer. It does not mean that these zero will when then become significant. No. See, it may be possible. In my system of unit, I am writing it as 0 0.001 and you are writing it as 10 centimeters. So, it has only one significant degree. Now, zeros that occur to the right of the decimal point are significant provided they are to the right of a non-zero digit. So, 1.034 has four significant digit. 1.00 has three significant digit. See, see, after decimal, these zeros are coming. These are significant. This has five significant digit, and this has one significant digit because these zeros are occurring to the left. So, uh, point to be which you have to make a note here is that all zeros, right, which are after the decimal, but to the right of a non-zero significant, is a significant digit. But to the left, it is always non-significant. Now, in science, what we do, we measure the large quantities. When we say the large quantity, the large range. See, I can measure 0 0.0001 meter. I can measure also up to 10 to the power 15 meter. So, what physics says that, okay, instead of writing, let's say, some number as 2.5 into 10 to the power 15 meter like this. You use certain notation. Okay, first you have to understand the notation. Uh, look at this big number. You won't write it like this. Instead of that, you will write it as 2.99 into 10 to the power 2, 2, 5, 8. 10 to the power 8. Not one point. I have just put one digit before the decimal. Just put one digit and then write 10 to the power something. Right? Are you getting this? Yes. So similarly here, if you see, uh, this is 0 0.00001602. You don't write it as like this. Instead of that, you write 1.602 into 10 to the power minus something. Right? So 10 is called the base and it is called the exponent. So when adding, so I, I hope you know the rule for measurement. Uh, you rule for uh, this exponent thing, right? Uh, can you tell me what is 2.5 into 10 to the power 8 plus? Can you tell me how much is this? Yes.
Yes, can you add this? Um, 5.1 times 10 to the 14. No, see you are adding it. How will you add? You make their 10 to the power as same. So it is 2.5 into 10 to the power 8. When you write 2.5 into 10 to the power 8 in the form of 10 to the power 6, you just do 250 into 10 to the power 6. 2.6 into 10 to the power 6. That is going to be 252.6 into 10 to the power 6. Now you write it as 2.526. Fine. Make sure whenever you add, 10 to the power has to be same and subtract. Okay. Can you do? Can you add? Um, 70.5 times 10 to the power of 7. Uh, okay, uh, so this is going to be 2.5 into 10 to the power 7 plus 68 into 10 to the power 7 which is 70.5 into 10 to the power 7 but you have to convert this into only one decimal, uh, one digit before the decimal. So it is 7.05 into 10 to the power 8. Fine. Any doubt? Uh, no. Can you can you do this multiplication? I'll just give you the simple one. Yes, just multiply it. Seven point five times ten to the power of thirteen. Got it. Okay. So I hope you got this uh, concept. We'll just do one more thing. Yes. Eight point three. Eight point three. Okay. Correct. Okay. So uh, let's go to the next one then. This we have done. Now look at these questions. So in these example, uh, in this example, we are going to evaluate each of the following. Just, just do one question then, um, we'll move to the next one, uh, one minute, let me do the question. Can you do, can you do this question, question number one only.
Uh, 1.75 times 10 to the 6. Okay. Correct. Okay, so now moving to the next one. So this is on measurement, right? Now as I told you, the order of measurements are also very high in this. What you do? Uh, whenever you have any quantity, there are very long range which is possible. So what we do? We don't use the uh, 10 to the power notation. We just use certain. Uh, you know, alphabet or some uh, scientific uh, uh, multiplier, uh, what I will say, notation. So, 10 to power 12 can be written as T, 10 to power 9 can be written as G, 10 to power 6 can be written as M. You might have heard about 1 terabyte hard disk, 100 Mbps speed, right, which is nothing but related to these numbers. So, we don't say uh, 10 to power 6, um, Bytes. We will just say it is uh, megabyte. Fine. Similarly, it is here. and uh, this had to. And this is uh, for deci we use 10 to the minus 1. For centi we use 10 to the minus 2. Milli we use 10 to the minus 3. 10 to the minus 6, 6 we use for uh, micro. Fine. So all all these are there. 10 to the minus 12 we use for pico. 10 to the minus 15 we use for femto. 10 to the minus 19 we use for auto. Now comes the uncertainty. Estimation. Okay, first is uh, this estimation uh, where uh, this new I think I have discussed with you. Just let's move to the next one. Uncertainty and error. Uncertainty and error are uh, whenever you measure any quantity, right? There are always some error associated with it. So what do you do? You don't take one measurement. Let's say if I ask you to measure the length of this pen. You won't measure it once. What you do first, you measure it from here, like this, and then you look. Then you rotate the pen, and then you'll measure it from here. Then you rotate the pen again, then you'll measure it from here. Like this, you'll take some 8 or 10 readings. You will note down each and every reading. Then you take the average of the, those readings. Fine? Once you find the average, yes. you find the associated error then. So, uh, this is called, we write the error as delta. So, any quantity, if you measure, let's say, if I ask you to measure this pen, let's say its length is 15 centimeter, but after doing certain uh, permutation and, you know, all this calculation, you found that it is 15.1 plus minus 0.2. Right? So, it means its measurement range is going to be 14.92. 15.3. That's what you get. So this is called error or the uncertainty. Uncertainty, why we call it as uncertainty? Because we are not sure what is going to be the exact value. So uncertainty in measurement, so no experiment quantity can be absolutely accurate as I told you. When measured it is always subject to some degree of uncertainty. We will look into the reason for this in this section. There are two types of error that contribute to our uncertainty about a reading, systematic and random. Systematic error, which are, as the name suggests, these types of error are due to the system being used to make the measurement. This may be due to the faulty apparatus. For example, a scale may be incorrectly calibrated, either during manufacture of the equipment or because it has changed over a period of time. So, we use the scale here. Right? So, there might be some uh, problem in the scale. There might be some problem in the way you read the reading. See, you, you might be measuring like this, but you are, you might be seeing it from here or from here, right? Accordingly, what happens? There is some parallax error which comes. So, this is the, on the uncertainty of some instrument. This, this is called systematic error. So, there is something called zero error. See, the, in the beginning, the scale should read zero. But here if you see, it is not reading 0, when it is 0. It is reading 0 0.01. So whatever you measure, right, it will automatically add 0 0.01 to this. So that is also an error. Fine. And uh, when systematic errors are small, measurement are said to be accurate. 
now this is something to do with uh, yes so you can see the error right uh, millimeter scale only ruler so if you see it like this it will you will not read the good reading or, or basically the actual reading so if you see here let's say if it is 5 if you see it from here you see it is 5 but when you look at it from here you might be reading it as 5.01 or 5.08 right this is called parallax error so uh, they are always also related to precision see uh, this this particular instrument can measure uh, up to 20 ampere right anything which is between 0 to 20 or 20 to 40 you will always have some estimation error that you have to take into account so let's say here it is 0.27 ampere right it's not that easy to uh, read this value from here so yes so this is you know this is 40 plus minus 5 that's why they are saying that for this the reading you will which will read will be 40 plus minus 5 because the minimum here you can measure is 20 right and here you might have some error in terms of when you read this so there are two types of error one is absolute error second is fractional error absolute error when it is exact number let's say if i said any number uh, which you have measured is 5 plus minus 0.5 this 0.5 is is the absolute it is some number you are getting that is called absolute error so the value of uncertainty that I have been looking at the called is absolute uncertainty but there is always called a fractional uncertainty now what is fractional uncertainty fractional uncertainty is whatever error you are getting divided by this number that is 0.1 that is 10 percent error is there fine any doubts from here uh, no okay when you multiply this with 100 that's what i have done here you will get percentage error Okay. Now propagation of uncertainty. What is propagation of uncertainty? See, you might have measured one quantity, right? But it's not that 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 is what you have to measure. Let's say if I ask you to measure the volume. No, no, not volume. Let's say density. Density you cannot calculate directly. What you do first you measure the mass. Then you measure the volume. And then you calculate the density. So, but when you measure the mass. There is some error associated with mass, right? So, mass has some error, volume has some error, then how will you write it? So, it says that there is a propagation of error. That is, let's say you have measured two quantities and you are adding them. What happened to the net errors? So, when you add them or subtract the quantity, errors get added. Just make a note of this. Error simply get added. Let's say if there are two quantity, you measure A as 5 plus minus 0 0.5, measure B as 7 plus minus 0 0.1, then if you have to say what is A plus B, you add A plus B as it is, it is 12, but the error has to be added. Right? If you have to find okay. A minus B, it will be minus 2 plus minus 0 0.6. Any doubt, Soumya? No, that's good. Okay. You have noted it? Yes. Now, what happens when you multiply and divide? During multiplication and division, the fractional or percentage uncertainty get added. Let's say A is 5 plus minus 0 0.5. So, its fractional error is 0.1. And B is 2 plus minus 0.1, then its fractional error is 0 0.05. So the total error, if you have to divide A by B, it's going to be 5 by 2 plus minus, just add them. The fractional get error get added. Fractional error I'm using the word, not the absolute. So A by B is equal to 2.5 plus minus 0.15 similarly if you have to do a into b you multiply them and just add the fractional errors right any doubt no now similarly when uh, okay when you draw the graph when you draw the graph 
it's going to be let's say you have measured the speed and the time right you show the speed in certain range like this let's say i measured it as 0.1 point 0.4 plus minus 0.3 then you show it like this time you have measured it as 0.2 plus minus 0.05 then you show it like this this is called the error bars fine now this yeah. is how you show this is called error bar again this is the zone of uncertainty that your value may range in this region now but when you measure lot of quantity right you you will get a kind of this now then you have to draw a best fit line best fit line simply says that okay if i have to draw some relation then what is the line which will pass through all the within the region you will draw the best fit line from here this is called best fit line this is also a best fit line you you can see that you know it is passing through within the range this is a range for this and it is passing through all these lines now there are two types of quantities in physics i just introduce this and then we'll discuss some questions in physics i told you we have two quantities one is fundamental second is derived right that is based on the uh, formula and all the other things but in physics we also have two types of physical quantities one is scalar quantity second is vector quantity now scalar quantity is the one which has only magnitude associated with it only magnitude no direction vector is a quantity which has have you done vector and scalar before in maths um we have done vector then vector right okay scalar is nothing but simple mathematics simple mathematics 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 that is scalar uh, okay vector is 1 1 meter in north plus 2 meter in um, east it's not equal to 3 you have to add them vectorially so it has magnitude and direction associated with it so let me give you some example there might be some question on this so scalar quantity you have the example of speed you have the example of uh, distance you have the example of uh, work done all these in vector you have the example of displacement velocity velocity acceleration like this any doubt in this omaya no have you noted it down have you noted it down ah uh, yes okay good now okay so we are done with this now we have last 20 minutes which is meant for solving the questions you will be given the score for each correct and each wrong answer which is given by you so make sure you provide the correct response fine so let's start with question number 1 so there are few question which you might not be able to do but try this okay okay Is this B? Sorry. B. No, I I could not get it. Can you please repeat? Um, I said B. You are saying B? Yes. Yeah. That's correct.
Okay. Is it C? You're saying answer is C? Yeah. North. For 20 seconds. Average speed. When you have to find the average speed, average speed. Uh, see in this case your answer is, uh, you, you just find what is the total distance, so total distance is 60 here, here it is 80, that is 140 by 40, you are right, 3.5 meter per second. Now one more thing, because they are asking the average, one more thing, right, your answer cannot be less than 3 and cannot be more than 4. So these three cannot be the answer. You are left with only C as the answer. Okay. You are right. Your answer is correct. You are right. Your answer is correct. Look at third. Yes. Yes. Is it C? You're saying it is C. You're saying it is C. Okay. Um, okay. That is two. One minute. Okay, it is point zero two. It's going to be two by ten, which is point zero two in term. So it is the fractional error. Now percentage, percentage of the volume of a sphere. Volume of the sphere is going to be 3 into 2.02 divided by percentage uncertainty of volume of the cube. That is going to be 0 0.02. No, just one minute. See, both are related to cube, right? Point zero six point one. Yes. Point zero. Answer is one. See, what is the percentage error in uh, what is the percentage volume of sphere? In uh, volume of sphere, it's going to be three into delta r by r, because the relation is uh, volume is volume four by three pi r cube. Pi r. But if you find delta v, find delta v, three into delta r by r. Which is just yes, point zero six. Just point zero six. Now percentage uncertainty in Q. Uncertainty in Q. That is going to be three into delta L by L. Into delta L by L. Which is again uh, in uh, no, just one minute. Just one minute. See, it is a diameter, right? So it means the radius is going to be 5 plus minus 0 0.1, yes, 0 0.1, which is again 0 0.02, correct. So the 3 to delta L by L is going to be L into 0 0.02 again, which is 0 0.06. So 0.06 by 0 0.06, your answer is 1. Any doubt in this, Romeo? Doubt in Romeo? Um, no. Yes, this one is easy. Can you do this? Can you do this? Um, C. C? Okay. D? Okay. You are right. You are right. Uh, because electric current is a, uh, a fundamental quantity, not the uh, charge. And for charge, it is Coulomb. Can you look at, can you look at, uh, okay, leave this. Uh, have you done chemistry before? Before? Uh, 
Yeah. Can you try this? See even if you are not able to, I'll, I'll, I'll just give you some help. Yes, Samia. Yes, Samia. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. See okay. the mass of proton. Proton is uh uh. 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 20 minus 27. Mass of electron is 9.01 into 10 to the power minus 31. So mass of proton by mass of electron is going to be around 10 to the power. So should power should 10 to the power 3 into 1.8. Point 8. Oh. Answer is 3. Can you look at next? Can you look at next? Okay. Uh, but have you? Uh, do you know uh, what, is you what is joule? What is what is joule? What is kilogram here? Kilogram here? Uh, yeah. Okay. Just try this. Okay. Just try this. Yes, Somia. Um, is it D? Hello? Hello? Um, is it a D? Yes, Somia, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Yeah. Hello? 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 Yes, Somia, can you hear me? Just give me okay. one minute, then I have to try. I said D. 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 Okay. See, joule is the unit of energy or the work done, which is given by force into displacement. Force is nothing but kilogram. Meter per second square. Multiply by second. So here you have to divide by kilogram. This will get cancelled. It is meter per second. So your answer is, answer is A. A. Right. Any doubt? Okay. Any doubt? Uh, no. Look at seventh. One minute. Seventh. Uh, the, the surface heat capacity you might not be doing, might not be knowing. And, uh, can you try ninth? Can you try ninth? C. 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 Okay. Okay. Uh, which of uh, the kilogram meter per second? No, kilogram meter square per second square is the answer. Because uh, one of the formula of energy, right. if you know, it is half square. Where mass is kilogram. Where mass is kilogram. Velocity is meter per second. Meter per second. So it is kilogram meter square per second square. Please the answer. Please the answer. Done seven. Let's look at one or two more. Yes. K. 
can you try this can you try this this is there no i can't see anything can you see it now can you see it now uh no you can just refresh your page once refresh your page Yes, Samia. Is it B? You're saying B or D? B. This one? Yes. Okay. Uh, F that acts on the uh, F is nothing but kilogram meter per second square, which is equal to K into meter per second whole square. Right, so K will be kilogram meter per second square. So it is kilogram per meter. So answer is A. Right? Yeah. Okay, so if you see, overall we have discussed three, four, five, six, eight questions. Out of which one, two, three, four, five are wrong. Three are correct. But it was a good thing that you know you try to attempt the question. Uh, you might have might not have done many terms like what is force. And but the thing is, this particular paper which you have said, it is said based on. Uh, you know what kind of question you can get at the end of the year, or you know during your first uh, exam in your school. So that's why there are certain terms which you will do in the next chapter. Right. So, uh, so may I with this now the session is coming to an end, and as you can see on the right, more uh, admin team has mentioned that we will give a call today, and we'll give you the feedback of uh, uh, this session. Right. Okay. Okay. So thanks, Somia, uh, for attending this session.